special occasion because unlike in many situations in this world, you're not getting the history from the books. You're getting it directly, unfiltered, from the people who made that history. And ladies and gentlemen, you're very, very fortunate here today to have three of the original Tuskegee Airmen here in your midst. Mr. Booker Conley was a gentleman who was here uh, who helped with Moton Field, who helped get things started, who has been not only a Tuskegee Airman, but a Buffalo soldier. Let's give him a hand. Please stand up. Let's give him a hand. A Buffalo soldier and Tuskegee Airman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is truly history. Truly history that you, our young people especially, are seeing here today. Ladies and gentlemen, next to him, Mr. Wilbur Mason from Tuskegee, Alabama, who was hired by the Tuskegee Army Air Corps and was the boss out there in the supply operations where everybody ordered all the parts and all of the equipment and everything to make the first black, all black Air Force Base run. Mr. Wilbur Mason, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Wilbur, stand up. Let him see you. A Tuskegee Airman from Tuskegee who made things work so that everybody could prove their worth. And ladies and gentlemen, now the 93, I'm sorry, 94 year young Air Force officer who swore me into the Air Force as a second lieutenant and said, go forth, young man, and replace me in the Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Lieutenant Colonel Herbert Eugene Carter, an original member of the 99th, an original member who has made history and was the aircraft maintenance officer for the entire war to keep everybody else in top-notch airplanes and ladies and gentlemen, he flew 77 of their toughest missions himself. So he was a dual threat. Thank y'all for having us here, having us come out, you know what I'm saying, to Tuskegee so we can, you know, we can get it in all weekend. And y'all, y'all gotta show us love, man, because he not he he's he's a city boy. He's from New York. I'm from I'm from Lagrange, Georgia. So I know how the country get down. So we gotta show Tristan how we get down down here. Are y'all down? How many y'all gonna see the movie? All right, Janu January twentieth. I didn't I didn't hear that. I didn't hear enough people that's gonna see the movie. How many y'all gonna see the movie? All right. special weekend as was indicated we're not only celebrating Martin Luther King uh, we're celebrating Faith Week and we're celebrating the Tuskegee Airmen who uh, have brought so much attention and fame uh, in recent uh, in recent history uh, to uh, uh, also uh, coincide with the rich history that everybody already knows about with uh, George Washington Carver, Booker T. Washington, et cetera. So uh, this is, a, this is a, an, an important occasion. And uh, moreover, uh, we have, um, uh, we will be, as I indicated yesterday, at the uh, filming of uh, Double Victory, uh, which uh, that double victory, namely over uh, Nazi, uh, Nazism uh, and the victory over segregation and racial injustice in this country. Uh, but uh, on that occasion, we, we made a commitment that we would be initiating the next generation of the Tuskegee Airmen by reinstituting 
training in, uh, in piloting, in aircraft mechanics, in aviation technology, in aerospace engineering, in real-time satellite remote sensing, and a host of other activities in order to uh, continue this illustrious history and tradition here at Tuskegee University. Thank you very much. It's good to be home, Tuskegee. I think it is so fitting that we pay tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen on Dr. King's birthday. Before Dr. King dared to share his dream of a day when black people and white people were considered equal in this country, a group of black men and women had the audacity to dream and believed that they could fly. They didn't stop with the dream though. They put the work in and saw it through. From their tenacity, a rural airstrip and a flight training program grew into historic Moton Field, an elite all-black squadron known as the Tuskegee Airmen. The history, mystique, and contributions of the Tuskegee Airmen has been documented in many forms, museums, books, cable TV shows, and now, through a new feature film, Red Tails. When I had the pleasure of talking to George Lucas about what it took to convince Hollywood that the story told, the story told in the movie Red Tails would appeal to a mass audience, it was a reminder of how far we've come and how far we still have to go. I am honored to introduce the cast of this cinematic tribute to the fighter group of World War II known as the Red Tails. Would you please stand, Terrence Howard. <laughs> Nate Parker. <laughs> David Oyolo. Elijah Kelly. And Anthony Hemingway. Red Tails, the movie from Lucasfilm. I am so thrilled to be here, I just wish all of the red tails were here. I, I have tears in my eyes because I, I know, I can't imagine, let me just say this, I can't imagine coming home from a war where you have absolutely freed Europe and you are not free yourself. I cannot imagine coming home with the pride of knowing that you kept a group together so tight and so strong and no one spoke about it. I can't imagine coming home. And there's a community of people celebrating, celebrating your return. And the United States of America did not acknowledge your existence. How is that possible? I know how irritated I get if I don't get pressed the next day. I can't imagine waiting this long to be recognized. But I know that these 
fine actors, you have no idea what you've done. You're directing, we've talked about this a very long time. It has come to pass. And now this particular story, they cannot say anymore, oh Lionel, I didn't know about that. Did that really happen? It really happened. And this is not our action hero movie. This is our tragedy. This is something that we have been trying to get to American history books and the motion picture and in our classrooms for years. And so when people say to me, what do you feel about this wonderful, wonderful, historic action hero movie? I say, you really don't understand the true struggle of these guys and ladies. So speaking on behalf of Tom Jordan, speaking on behalf of the kids who grew up around these wonderful people, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Congress as a National Historic Site. Um, that happened in 1974, and Tuskegee has been operating with the National Park Service ever since then. So uh, we operate the Carver Museum as well as the Oaks, the home of Booker T. Washington. Ran a little late, we're going to try to get you into Booker <laughs> T's home because that house is amazing. It's a Queen Anne Victorian home built in 1899. This campus was actually built by the students. They made the bricks, they made the nails, they harvested the wood, they did all of this. Okay. So this place didn't just become great with the Tuskegee Airmen. It, of course, it, it added to the wonderful store. But If it wasn't for Tuskegee Institute, there wouldn't have been Tuskegee Airmen. Exactly. It wouldn't have been Tell them about the Sebastian. This is where we're going. Yeah, we're headed to the monument now, guys. You're gonna take a photo. This was the photo place uh, on the campus. It's a monument built in 1921. Uh, it represents Booker T. Washington lifting the veil of ignorance from his, for his people. Especially in terms of the, the relationship that I have with 
you know, lightning and easy in the film that, you know, these, these men, they were brilliant men, they were brilliant minds, and they were individuals, and they were individuals who went on to do incredible things on that basis. And what, you know, why these men were marginalized, that they were lumped as a group, they were deemed to be inferior, they were deemed to have smaller brains, they were deemed to be physiologically weaker. But when you, when you, one of the things that we very rarely get the opportunity to do in movies as well is to be seen as a group of young black men as opposed to stereotypes as well. Um, and so that was an, an incredibly gratifying uh, thing to, to see that in them, to celebrate it in us, and that's a scene of the screen. We thank you so much for that and for our director to see the name of Bill Holloman up there and the Archer and you dedicated the film, the film to them uh, because they passed away this past uh, year. Thank you so very much for that. I can tell you that meant so much to all of us.